Hi, my name's Dave. I'm a professional business analyst and project manager uh, living in the UK, in Manchester. Um, I'm in between contracts at the moment, so I'm just doing a bit of um, uh, learning to brush up my, my skills, or rather learn new skills in Python. Um, I've been taking an opportunity to learn Python for benefiting my um, business analysis work over the last, say, 12 months or so, um, because I think it's a really good opportunity or a really good system for um, being able to manipulate data um, uh, and do operations on data quite quickly and then in a repeatable way. Um, so I've used it for things like um, fuzzy matching um, and um, various other things that have been helpful to uh, my business analysis activities. And for me, um, learning Python is really just a means to an end. So it's about solving business problems using computer programming. Um, so it's no different really than picking up Excel and using that. Um, but, you know, for me, Python is um, is more powerful because it allows you to do a lot more things than just things that you could do using Excel. So that's the kind of background, really. What I have found is I've struggled quite a bit with learning Python. Um, a lot of the books seem to be centred around providing output that is just kind of, well, it's, it, it's, it's basic stuff. So um, it is... It's it's kind of a list. It's going through all the Python functions. It's going through for loops, while loops, uh, inputs, TK, TK, TK into things like that uh, for graphical user in, input uh, or interfacing. Um, and I, I I wasn't finding anything was sticking. That was the problem. So I'd I'd kind of I do a I do some. A section of code and then I get to a point and I think I don't actually understand how I, I can't remember any of this it's it's not sinking in and I hit I was I was watching some YouTube um, footage of uh, some some guy recommending three books you know my, my top three books and down in the comment section where I sort of sometimes will scroll through um this guy was recommending a book called learn to code by solving problems by uh, daniel zingaro and he was he was he was just very simple like if i had if i had to choose one book to do python it would be this and i thought to myself it's worth a look that that sounds really useful um so i i kind of looked at the, the the book the background of the book a little bit and you know i thought I'm going to I'm going to give it a whirl. It's like 28 quid or something to buy. Um, you know, it's if I've lost if I if I spend 28 quid um but I get some additional you know an additional reference book, it's not the end of the world, you know. Um so I I I I bought it and I've got to say I'm totally hooked on it. It's fantastic. The ideas behind it are what you would expect from someone who's got a PhD in learning, in education. Um, so the guy who's written it is not, he's, yes, he teaches computer programming, but his background, his, his speciality is actually teaching, to teaching people to learn. So I think that's a really important distinction. Um, and I'll run through sort of some of the idea of the idea of how the book works, and hopefully you can understand why I'm so absolutely, you know, absolutely switched by it. It's changed my Python abilities in eleven days, beyond recognition. I just don't recognise where I was before, um, you know, from from a from a. A retention point of view from a capability point of view it's just completely awesome so let me just cut to the computer and uh, you know I, I, and, and the book and I'll just give you a little bit of a heads up as to how it works and you know what the I think personally the benefits are uh, and why you should maybe consider using this learning method as opposed to some of the other self-teach books because this for me, well, for me anyway, this one works. 
So let's cut to the computer. So the book itself is um, based around these online code judge sites com for competitive programming. And I'd never really kind of heard about competitive programming before I started working with this book. Um, so what the book does is it effectively um, introduces the teaching in terms of setting a problem, working through the problem, and then working you you know sort of giving you a solution to it ultimately. But then at the end of each chapter of um, the the book, it gives you a, a list of curated problems. Now the thing is, these these online code judges are absolutely superb from a point of view of they've just got thousands and thousands of problems on them. Um, you know, from all different numbers of points. So this one that's got three points will be easier. You know, these ones that have got 17 points or whatever or higher, you know, um, up to uh, 50 points um, will be so much harder, you know. I mean, the book itself is kind of starts you off with three and five point um, problems. But one of the things that I found is that the problems can be quite strangely worded so they're worded in a way that it's kind of they feel like a translation from another language to English um, or they're just written in a really kludgy way um, however I, once you've got your head around that type of strangely written um, thing and you just get yourself into the actual logic of the way that the um, the, the problems work um, they're great. So this one's one of the early ones that's actually set in the book. I think it might even be problem one. Um, so I did this one 11 days ago. It's fairly kind of straightforward. Um, but what effectively it's doing is it asks, it gives you a, a string of text as an input. Um, and then you're supposed to just count the number of words there are. Um, so yeah, fairly straightforward stuff. Um, and there's a number of different ways that you can solve it, but the way that it's it's introduced in the book is effectively just count the spaces, add one, um, and you know output that the um, result to um, as a, as a print statement, and then what the um, the code judge does is effectively runs your code against um, a number of um, different um, different input cases. And, you know, you'll get scored. You'll either pass it or you won't. Um, and if you pass it, you get three points. The constraints are it has to, the code has to execute within two seconds. It has to uh, come in within this memory limit of 64 megs, which, I mean, I've, I've only, there's only one, I think one problem that I've come up in at about 20 so far or 30 um, that I had an issue with the time limit. And I was looking at the problem in the wrong way uh, in that case. So I found that once I once I kind of had looked at it in a little bit more of a um, an algorithmic sense, it made it was just a lot quicker. I was I was just trying to do I was just trying to brute force a problem that had an al algorithmic um, uh, solution to it. But that's don't worry about that for the, for the first bit. But because the important thing is, is it's the concept of how a question is set, an input is given, an output is expected, and then you effectively um, produce code that, that that that's supposed to meet that um, that case. Sometimes you get a number of, a number of sample inputs. Sometimes you kind of don't get enough, in my view. But um, there's nothing to really stop you submitting it and then sort of realise, you know, there's a problem with this and then you kind of work through it and resolve the problem. So I've just um, got this one. So this is called Not a Wall of Text and in the book it's known as Problem One Word Count. So I'm using a Jupyter Notebook here. Um, I'll just kind of work through it. So um, very quickly kind of realise, well, you can do the um the you know you can do some do some text um count the number of spaces add one that gives you the number of words effectively because you 
you've got for every kind of two word you've got one word in the mid uh, one space in the middle um so it's it's effectively just a counting number of spaces and adding one um you're told in the um you're told in the uh, the example um or the brief that you've that you're not gonna end with a space um before or after which you could you could work around that anyway even if you, you did you could just trim it um but the important thing is, is you're starting simple um and I wouldn't say my code is very um, is very sort of complex. I try to keep my code really readable. Um, I'm not a programmer. I'm just I'm a business person who is trying to um, is trying to work through um, a business problem and produce an output which is required. I have found that the code judges, you know, don't like this sort of your text is text. Um, you know, or please input your string of text. They're just expecting an empty box. They're expecting an output that's just the output that's specified. So um, I kind of tripped up over that a little bit to start with. But the long and the short is that these online code judges are awesome for um, getting you to practice code. The reason why the book is good is because it curates these problems into a structure um, so I'll cut to the um, book and just give you an example of um, some of the chapters and how the actual book's structured. So just to give you an idea of how the uh, the book's structured, you you know it takes you through the basics and this word count one was the curated problem one as we're saying. Um, it gives the the um, the problem statement. The you know talks about the the way the inputs and outputs are done talks about strings and the way that that that, that, that um the way that things are are, are, are structured and the, the way that um, python actually does these things um and you know if i was going to solve the problem again i think i would maybe solve it slightly different in the to the way that i'd solved it the first time um but there's many different ways to do you know to resolve a problem i mean from my perspective what you're looking at is is trying to solve the problem reasonably as quick as you can um without kind of too much hassle so from my perspective it doesn't have to be a perfect programming solution it doesn't have the code doesn't have to be optimized it doesn't have to be um you know written in any other way that i'll come back to it in a year maybe and go yeah i understood what i was actually writing so i am not by you know i'm not aiming to become a programmer because that's not what i'm kind of trying to do like it's not what i'm trying to achieve what i'm trying to achieve is is it's like it's like buying another tool for the toolbox right so python is just a it's just a set of a set of tools that you can add to your toolbox um as a business analyst um and you can solve bigger problems and you can fix bigger problems by knowing it. And I think that's where it um, this book actually completely excels because the way that it teaches you is in, in a really engaging way. But you it's it's done in a way like as though it's you're learning it from a an actual taught class. So in comparison to say books like this one, which is you know, Python in easy steps great book very well written very clear and maybe i would kind of go take that um you know if i've got a problem with something that's that's written in that i would maybe use some of the some of the um that this is a kind of reference material for that and i i worked mostly through this book um to the point where i got to the kind of final end project and i was like this none of this is sinking in I, you know, we've done all sorts of things like sort of um, GUI and um, uh, pickling and uh, file output, reading files in, um, all sorts of stuff, T TK, uh, t using TK Enter as a GUI, all sorts of stuff. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I was like literally not, I was not able to retain any of it. Whereas like with this, I'm less far along in terms of complexity of what I'm doing 
I'm still like kind of doing four loops, if loops, while loops. But I could actually pick a computer up, or, you know, I can open um, Jupyter Notebook and I can write loops, input, output, manipulating stuff now, like just without having to refer to anything. So this, for me, this is a far better way of learning um, than, you know, some of the other books, which, I mean, as I say, don't get me wrong, if this is your learning style, great. But if it's not, then, you know, this is probably um, a good um, option to look at. And, you know, um, Daniel Zingaro's taught thousands and thousands of students to learn to code using these type of techniques. So it's a book, great, happy days. And I think as I get better, I'll probably get maybe into some of the competitive coding just to um, just to kind of stretch myself. Um, but I think from my perspective, once I have learned to, you know, really get my head around uh, reading stuff in, um, doing manipulations on it and then read, uh, uh, writing it back out to, uh, you know, like an Excel sort of or a um, CSV type format or reading in from a Word document and then reading out for uh, um, outputting to whatever other formats required. I could see that that becoming a kind of plateau and not needing to go much further for my, my sort of um, my needs. But, um, you know, to each their own. And I think for, for me, this is definitely um, going to get me there a lot quicker because I'm learning and I'm engaged and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I'm sorry if it's been a bit kind of wordy. I'm not scripted. I'm not into kind of um, doing a thousand million cuts. This is just a quick benefit overview of my experience with this book. Um, and just I've, I've produced this not for any financial reasons, but just because I feel as though some people might benefit. So if you do, please give us um, a, a, a like. Um, happy to take comments on it and um, if you're still watching thanks for watching and um, I will hopefully keep you updated on my Python learning over time. Woo.